Hey, this is Betsy, and you're listening to Your Morning Mana, the best Monday morning wake-up show. Did you know that every week there's a challenge issued? And now, and now this, and week, now, this week, joy, joy challenge. 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 Right here on Your Morning Mana, every Monday morning a joy challenge is offered. Tune in to see how you can bring joy to your world. You have been challenged. Now go out and spread joy. Does this bring you joy? Me neither. How about this? This is Paul from your Morning Manor crew. Join us here on WCC from 8 to 10 a.m. on Monday mornings, where we guarantee to bring you joy. This is Jim Hanna of Oz Sunshine. My wife Anita and I have over 25 years experience in the decorated apparel industry. Oz Sunshine is a Christian-based, family-owned business that offers screen printing, embroidery, promotional products, signs, vinyl decals, and vehicle wraps. We offer fast, friendly service at a reasonable price. At Oz Sunshine, all customers are treated like family. Our goal is to develop a relationship that will last a lifetime. You may reach us on the web at ozsunshine.com or call us at 803-226-0532. That's 803-226-0532. Spreading God's love one order at a time here at Oz Sunshine. You are listening to WUCC 99.9 FM, a station dedicated to preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ 24 hours a day. Hey, this is Jace Turner. Be sure to join the Morning Mana Crew every Monday morning from 8 to 10 a.m. right here on God's Radio Station, 99.9 FM. Hey there. Thank you for listening to 99.9 FM. Because of our loyal listeners, we are able to share truth, like on Mondays with Morning Mana. Sowing into this ministry helps spread the word of Jesus Christ, and your financial support makes it possible to send the truth around the world. Thank you for listening to WUCC, and God bless. You're listening to Your Morning Manna. You are under arrest. Does this sound familiar? If you ever find yourself in this situation, be sure to call A1 Bonding and Enterprises. This is a family-owned Christian business that is here to help. Call their Aiken office at 803-642-5190. That's 803-642-5190. And you can tell them you heard about them on Your Morning Manor. Hi, this is Dana Turner with All About You Hair and Nail Salon. And we are proud sponsors of Your Morning Manna. Listen every Monday from 8 to 10 a.m. right here on 99.9 FM, the voice of Truth Station. Hey, CSRA, if your lawn is in need of some TLC, how about giving Tony of Riverfront Lawn Care a call at 803-257-5832? That's 803-257-5832. And remember... They always give you mo for your money. Hi, this is Dana. Be sure to check us out every Monday morning from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. for the Morning Mana Show right here on 99.9 FM WUCC. Hey, y'all, this is April with Morning Mana Crew, and I just want to invite you to listen to us on Monday mornings from 8 to 10 a.m. here on WUCC Live. Saddle up your horses. Good morning. It's time to saddle up for your weekly ride with Morning Mana and the Morning Mana Crew. Uh, good morning, good morning, everybody. <laughs> Here we are running into the studio. Let me see. Here we go. Got it? Hello. Everybody? Testing, one, two. Yeah. yeah. One, right. two, okay. three. Woo, goodness gracious. Hallelujah, What Jesus. a great Monday morning, huh? Yes. Yes, goodness. 
Uh, so we're so happy favorite. to be here. That's right. Exactly right. So um, I'm excited to be here. As y'all can see, we're all running into the studio trying to get everything done. Uh, we're missing April here this morning because usually I just handle my part on the board and she gets right. all the, the split stuff done. So um, I've been trying to get all that organized. And Bill's so thankful. He's on night shift and he left work and came in and joined us to be here so we wouldn't be too shorthanded. So yes. thank you, babe, for doing that. You're welcome. But so I'm, wonderful. I'm running on empty. He's mm -hmm. running on empty, so we're going to pray strength over I, you, I have me some Mountain Dew. Did you? Okay, good. good. <laughs> and then we've got a good friend of ours, Donna, that's going to be joining us here shortly. Yes. Oh, we're excited about that. This will be her first time on the show. Yeah. So yours. We're excited. <laughs> oh, well, that feels so silly. Donna, if you hear him, don't pay any attention. She's on her way in. She can, she can, she can take it. She can she take can it. Take That's it. right. She'll probably be here real, real late. <laughs> so funny. She's, she's on the way. <laughs> She'll be here in a second. But anyway, I'm excited about today's program. We got some awesome guests coming on, and yes. cannot wait for y'all to hear from him Hallelujah. and um. Uh, them uh, actually uh, so y'all hadn't shared it go ahead and share it already. yeah that's right please. so go ahead uh those of you that are watching us on facebook and share hit click that share button at the bottom and let's share that and get it to the top of our feed as we get started this morning um we're very excited and i promise you you do not want to miss uh what what our guest is going to bring to you today that's right so anyway um, as usual, we're going to begin our program. So I'm going to turn that over to Rachel. Let me find my little thing here. All right, Rachel, go right ahead. Uh, thank you, Father God, for this day. And I want to mm -hmm. read this piece of scripture here. First John 5, verses two, uh, 3 and 4. Loving God means keeping his commands. And really... That isn't difficult for every child of God defeats this evil world by trusting Christ to give the glory. Father God, I live to you this day. Yes. I live to you our our victory in you and in our weakness. You are made strong, yes, even though we love Mountain Dew, God. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, God, for today. Thank yes. you for every listener. Thank you for the guest host today. Thank you for April and Paul. Even in their absence, Father, we know that they're praying for us, Father. Yes. I live to you our guests today and i lift to you all the words that are spoken here today and say thank you father thank you father thank you jesus thank you holy ghost in jesus name we pray amen 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 hey and while we're here i want to go ahead and listen um we have our prayer jar out here this morning right is sitting right in front of rachel so yes. those of you let me switch here to while this is up on the screen i want to tell you first things first in our prayer segment today is brought to you by the bodybuilder ministry and uh, we love and thank them so much for he, he all they that. do for us. Um, Kathy Lemonia. Kathy, Kathy Lemonia. Yeah. Yes, yes uh, Kathy. She's a good girl. Our yes. prayer moment was brought to you today by Bodybuilder Ministry. Yes. And we thank you. Yes, we absolutely do. And and listen, I want to say, uh, too, this morning, we've had a very special prayer request to come forth. <clears throat> and so God knows what it is. And so uh, one of our awesome sponsors had a prayer request this morning. So Rachel's going to put it in the jar. But I want to encourage you out there, too. If you have a prayer request you'd like for us to pray over during the week, um, just let us know. Uh, you can send it to us in an email. You can type it in this Facebook feed uh, and let us know if you would like us to pray, join in and pray in. Today's uh, prayer that we've had a special request for is very um, important. A kid was in a bad uh, motorcycle wreck and i'll just leave it at that but god knows and god can heal those broken bones and absolutely stop the the bleeding in the brain and all the things that are going on right now so we just speak that forth in jesus name hallelujah and yes i agree um, in jesus him. name i'd like all our listeners to uh pray for my oldest sister too if they would yes oh uh, she's going through double pipe double bypass surgery uh tuesday well tomorrow morning yes she so, is um and i know those have become kind of you know routine but at the same time she's a good bit older than me and um she's going through other, other problems health too issues. that's so right we're hoping that she'll come out of this and everything will be wonderful and she can get over the um and she will yeah, we're gonna speak she'll get that. over the illness at the hospital to begin with so. we got to go there uh uh saturday afternoon she's at richland hospital in lexington and pray with her and 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 visit with her for a good little while and we had a really good time so you know guys we just want you to know it's important for us uh, you know for you to engage with us for your for your prayer requests and needs because we do want to join in with you on that 
And, you know, we have such awesome, awesome sponsors that, that sponsor this because there's nothing more important than prayer. And today I thank Kathy Lemonian and the Bodybuilder Ministry for that. Yes. And thank you, um, Jesus. we just want to encourage you and we speak life over those requests and whatever needs they are that we know our God can meet it because he is more than able. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to do just a couple shout outs. We've got a couple people that have joined us this morning. We've got uh, Christy Frixell and uh, she just had a birthday. Oh, birthday yeah, girl. that's right. Birthday uh, happy girl. birthday, Christy. And then um, Kathy Lemonian and Tony and Cindy Melton are joining us. So, guys, y'all be sure and share this program so that they can join it. We have an awesome guest coming on in about. Uh -oh. uh, what's Blue wrong? Hair Prophet just tuned uh -oh. in. Okay. <laughs> hey, Tony, how Good you doing morning, this morning? Tony. That's right. Um, but uh, we have a guest that y'all are not going to want to miss this morning. Yes. And Fantastic. so I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, I don't know. I'm not yeah, sure. Okay. All you. right. So anyway, um, so today with our conversation with the crew, let me, we'll move on to that. And now for your listening pleasure, conversation with the crew. Okay, so I have a couple things I want to talk about this morning. First Alrighty. of all, the first subject that I, I want to talk about is what just took place this past Saturday in downtown Augusta. That would be the Jesus March. The Jesus March. I do because I don't know if any of you that are watching on Facebook that are local here to the CSRA or are listening on 99.9 FM. Did y'all get to go to the Jesus March? I had to work this year, so oh, I missed it. The first one I've missed. I missed but, seeing you there. Yeah. But yes, I got I, to go. I know. It was so exciting. So tell me about your experience a little bit, Rachel. Oh, what did you... It was fantastic. The, the worship was awesome. Um, there was a lot of dancers there. Uh -huh. And the whole thing, uh, and they had my favorite part of it. They had a booth set up. <clears throat> and it was uh, had written across the side Teshuva, and the one, one of the women walked up to me and asked me. She said, "What do you do? You know that was what they were asking everybody in the crowd. Do you know what Teshuva means?" And I said, "Yes, that's repentance." She said, "You're the first person we have ever asked that knew what it meant." Wow, really? I said, "What?" She goes, "Yes." She said, "We've been doing this for a long time, and nobody knows what Teshuva means." And their message is, you know, to get out that we we need to all repent. The church needs sure, to repent. Sure. So. I just yes. thought, I just love that. I love, yeah, I just that's love awesome. that. Yeah. Uh, I got to go. Okay. Um, I sat in a very hard folding chair for a few <laughs> hours and uh, got to talk and all that good stuff. Yeah, so because 99.9 was live there. We covered it live. It was yes. awesome. Yes. We broadcasted it. Um, the talent they had was superb. Yes. We also um, got to find out there were some people from other cities there to check out what we were doing so they could do yes. it in their city that's oh, right awesome. so, that's right somewhere in new york and some somewhere else i can't remember but uh that was that was cool um that is so awesome. had a very good crowd i thought i think um it should be a little bit shorter because the people you know, i mean it's saturday so a lot of people yeah, have they, other things going yeah, on they too. marched kind of rushed everybody looked around real quick and then dispersed so yeah and i felt bad for the people that were on stage last you know because there was you know probably 100 people there yeah you know? right but it doesn't matter size you well i'll tell you what i watched the drone away. footage that showed people yeah, marching was, and stuff now that was so cool yeah. to me i was seeing all I those people marching marching awesome. down broad street you know some carrying the crosses some with their banner some with their flags yeah, you know I just love, marching i, gotta I love drone. that i want to get a your morning man a drone mm -hmm. Well, Walter was unable to go, but Caleb came with me, and he was going to try to be getting in the car with Bill yesterday, but it just didn't quite happen. Yeah, well, should have said something. I know, right? But he, we, 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 it just didn't happen. Right. But, but the really wild thing is, last night Rose Schaefer texted me a picture. Caleb and her are on the front page of the Augusta Chronicle. Yeah. Are they? They sure are. Yeah, oh my gosh! I need to videos. see and, that. Yeah, and I'm if right. If I'd have known that, I'd have put it on the screen. And here right behind right Caleb, see. my hands are like this. But you can't see me, but you can see my hands. <laughs> <laughs> and Rose's hands are in the air, and it's and they named her on the paper. Yeah, a couple of uh, awesome. A couple of videos. I saw Paige too. Oh, okay. Paige yeah. Was sitting there filming it. Yeah, that's her, right. Her Everybody uh, filmed. It was camera. awesome. It we was, had a great yeah. time. I am so was, glad. Um, I when, of course, you know, I fixed, I cleaned my car. Spent all day Friday cleaning cars. As soon as I walked in, boom, we had a started raining. <laughs> uh, we had about a seven minute shower, so I had to walk back out there. I dried it all off again, and uh, I said, you know, it looks good. It looked good wet. It too. was all shined up. It looked yeah, good. So uh -huh. We came. What did we do Friday night? We came out here and did a two hour show, sure, right. live uh -huh. after dark. So 
um, got back to the house, went to sleep. I said, Lord, you know, please don't let it rain tomorrow. I got up, it was cloudy, <laughs> really dark. It was like 5 o'clock, and I said, oh, I don't see no stars out or nothing. I said, just hold it off. But let he didn't. The, that's right. No, it didn't rain. So. It didn't rain. Everybody yeah. had a good time, and I think the clouds kept it a little bit cooler. It was cooler this year than a, it was last year. had an excellent breeze. Yeah. Mm -hmm, so, a good breeze, um, yeah. So I was I'm, grateful for the Saturday breeze. was a very full day for us after the march, and Bill met me after work, and then we to to took off to Columbia. He went to chiropractor. We went to Columbia to see our grandson's a little bit of his baseball game. Uh -huh. And then from there to the hospital awesome. yeah, and then back home. And anyway, it was a great day, but I just wanted to bring that up because I thought it was a great turnout. And Got every a, year it excites me uh, to, awesome. to get to get to be able to be a part of that. And our radio station be able to broadcast that live. Uh, I got a couple more shout out. OK. Uh, Tony and Cindy Melton she said Cindy's watching. So. Good morning, Cindy. Uh, Donna King finally joined us. Good morning, she said Donna. good morning. Good morning, Donna. Uh, dear friend of mine, Tammy Ford Willen is watching. It's good, good to have morning. her. Good morning. So, um, yeah, Saturday was good. Actually, the whole weekend was, um, I mean, just mm -hmm. a great weekend. Uh, great. Donna yeah. is here. Yay. She's I'll at the go front get her. door. Okay. Her. So um, while she's letting Donna uh, get ready to come on in, because I know Donna was at the Jesus March, too. Um, I, I seen and her. she had a good time worshiping and all that kind of stuff. So another thing this morning, um, we all know that here in Aiken County, school starts back. Yep. Today. And so, now, did you see our handsome grandson on Facebook? I have not seen that yet. I have I've not. Oh, let uh, me go show it to you. Oh, you got a picture? Well, we will sure post that up. But um, we're excited about it because today, our even I, Donna, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, about time. <laughs> That's right, girl. All your, right. As your, as your grandson. All right. Okay. Oh, look at here. Let me show this picture. Let me get to the screen here. Let me find it. Uh, you can go ahead and cut. What number are you? Huh? Four. Go ahead. Uh, cut. She's on. Go ahead. Just cut, cut, cut her four off. Cut her off. <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm on. See. I'm you on, see this picture right here? Oh, look at that. He's so cute. Yes, he is. He's handsome. Oh my gosh, she starts middle school this year. Yeah, got some good teachers. I got to meet all yes. those teachers. So I was praying over them this morning coming out. I was like, God, our kids are going back to school now. Protect their minds from anything the world wants mm -hmm. to deposit in there. Oh my gosh, look at there. Oh, let me do. Let me go back. I got to show this picture too. <laughs> Let's see. Y'all keep talking. My son started the seventh grade today, <laughs> and I also started the seventh grade today. Oh uh, yes, right. <laughs> okay, here's the picture. Let me see if I can get this up. Oh, here look at there. Oh, that's Sister Rose. Yeah. Dewey, yeah, Sister Rose. Dewey, and Caleb. Yeah. How about that? And I'm behind Caleb with my hands lifted, but you can't see me. <laughs> So that is on the front page of the Augusta Chronicle this yeah, morning. Yeah. How awesome is it's that? It's actually yesterday's paper. Oh, yesterday's yeah, paper. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yay. Let me get back over here. Isn't that awesome? I thought you worked. I do work, sir, but I just happen to be off today. And I am so glad that was yes. an answer to prayer this yes. morning. Y'all know, know I work for Homeland Security. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was hanging out with her Friday night. and. Yeah. Um, I just, I just said, she says, you know, I'm thinking about, I might ride up there to the studio since I'm off Monday. I said, you just need to come be a guest on the show. Exactly. You need to come be on the show. And it worked out I great. I get to listen to you guys because I'm working. Right. So. Well, this morning, I mean, you know, it, April's supposed to be here and it's the first day of school. So she mm -hmm. wanted to take all her little kiddos to school mm -hmm. on the first She's day. She's watching too. So yeah. Hi. Good morning, April. Good morning, April. Uh, well, yeah. I drug my son to school. He was <laughs> not happy. <laughs> is, he, is he ever happy? <laughs> He was, he's happy on the inside because uh, he looked miserable even at the march hey, like, he is hey, so much like me guys. he just that just uh, yeah you know it's kind of one of those things what was that the preacher said i'm i'm raising my right. hand yeah. i'm dancing on the inside, on the inside. yeah type of thing uh, you he, know what he gets though, that I honestly it. because when i was young everybody was always telling me would you smile would you please smile i'm like <laughs> hated it he'll come through he'll come he'll, through. he That's sure right. will That's he'll right. be all right and That's he's right. a he's a you know Preteen oh, boy, teenage he's a good boy. Kid, though. It he's is a good what kid. it is, girl. Yes, girl. Some things that come out of his mouth. He's a good. Kid. I have to check myself. I know. <laughs> Let me tell you. Yeah, raising them boys, I so that. understand. Shout out to Alvita. <laughs> but anyway, what's up, Alvita? Uh, April thought that Alvita. was funny. Happy on the inside. We had uh, the pastor say that one time in one of the sermons uh -huh. about dancing and worshiping, and he, and you know, he said I was, I started just move my shoulders, or I moved a little bit like this, you know, or I raised <laughs> my hand a little yeah. bit. Yeah, it was awesome. You got, a, you got a CD in, girl. But I'm happy on. No. Oh, somebody left it in. Oh, okay. I, I thought we were gonna play. No, something. no, no, no. <laughs> okay. Um, 
April says, Bill surrounded with the ladies. I have no clue. The <laughs> He's used to it. Yeah, he can hang. The in here is sucking the testosterone <laughs> right out of me. And that is um, the goal, sir. That is the goal. Because I am, you know, I just got off 12 hour shift. Worked all night, and I know it, and I'm, I'm so thankful. I'm strong, but I am weak. So listen, let me tell you about that. This morning, um, for the you know, when I found out April couldn't be here, and I was telling, and then we have um, our guests coming in, and I was like, Rachel starting a new job. I mean, I'm I'm panicking because I'm like, oh Lord, what am I gonna do? So Bill said, Honey, I'll come after work, oh, and I'll so be sweet. there. Ain't he sweet? You know, mm. because I'm thinking there's no way. I'm going to be able to I'm do this all by on myself. The <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then Rachel said she could be here for a little while. And then she said, You were coming. I said, yes. Good. I'm going to make Donna stay the whole show with me because I know he needs to go home early. and go yeah. to bed. So I'm anyway. Yeah, I'm leaving too, but I, I love Please, being here. Please, Bill, what go home and get your beauty sleep. <laughs> April said it's better to keep that uh, mute button on since she um, worked all night. But yeah. um, <laughs> we're not scared of Bill. I'm not scared. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta get beauty sleep, so I'll be asleep for a while. <laughs> yeah, all right. But anyway, <clears throat> so we were talking about school this morning. Yes. And all our kids day. going back to school. So I got up this morning like I usually do, and I'm getting ready. I did not take into account for school buses, buses. this morning. Uh, uh, right. Right. So I'm like, oh, Lord, just get me to the studio. I got all this to do, and those school buses on the road, mm -hmm. and, you know, just. But anyway, we made it. Hallelujah. And all our kid, kiddos are in school right now. Yes. And so Thank just you, we just speak over them in this school year that this will be a year of exceptional learning, that they won't have any behavioral problems. Hallelujah. That our kids will learn I and agree. their little Jesus minds will be make. protected from anything the world tries to throw well, at them. That yeah. was my direction in prayer for my son was, Lord, you know what's going on with him. You know what he needs. And I pray that the enemy will not intercept. That's and, right. And put something else in the right. place that what you have for him. What school is he going to? Sweetie? Williston Elko Middle School. Okay. okay. Awesome school. Right. Can't well, say enough good about them. They're really well, good Well, Jace started middle school this year. Yeah, school and I'm field. telling you, I cannot believe my grandson. He will be 11 years old tomorrow. That concept of walking to classes, I think, is going to mess him up a little bit. <laughs> well, so that's one of the things I wanted to ask you all about How school. Okay, class? so, you know, going to school, I mean, I know it's been a while for most of us. But do y'all have certain memories that I remember going to middle school and one of the, the things that tormented me more than anything was forgetting my locker combination. Mm -hmm. like, Aiden would not use hey. his locker last year yeah. for that reason. Right. I was so, like, during school I was okay, but, like, when you went on, like, Christmas break mm -hmm. or whatever, I was paranoid that I'm, what if I go back to school and I can't remember mm -hmm. my locker combination? Um, what am I going to do? There, they don't. They don't put that on the sixth graders. They wait till seventh and eighth. Oh, grade okay, to, uh, okay. And then changing classes. Yeah, that's always I'm like, a little bit. Am I gonna crazy. be able to find my classrooms? Well, see, he's going to Jason's going to Schofield, which I attended it. But back when I was there, it was just ninth and tenth. Mm -hmm. well, now it's sixth, seventh, and I guess that was eighth, a long whatever. time ago. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It was right after they were writing on stone yeah, tablets. Yeah, right after the Revolutionary War, because uh, uh, I'm just a little bit younger than Dirt. But anyway, the class, one of his classes, is in one of the classes I had that I failed miserably. Uh -oh. and, you know, so I went to my mama to get her to defend me for the teacher, and her and the teacher both jumped on me. Mm -hmm. So I do y'all have do y'all have any memories like of school that like? You know, that's something that really stood out to you, like you were afraid of something in school or something funny or something that oh, happened. Yes. I mean, well, what? my middle school years were, those were the best years. Mm -hmm. there, that was before boys. Right. And we had a lot of friends and playing around outside. One time my shoe was thrown out into the highway, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. We got in trouble for stepping off of school grounds. <laughs> the, the, the most fun was in between class, walking in the halls. Um, and just playing around, and then we would get to be hall monitors and just show out. Now what school did you attend? Barnwell. Oh, okay. The oh, okay. War Horses. Yeah. All right. Oh, yes. There you go. Oh, hey. You know, I don't know if y'all believe this or not, but I'm in middle school in eighth grade. Yeah, because back then it was uh, eighth and ninth grade. So, ninth grade, I'm sorry. Um, I was the vice president of the FBLA. I was an FBLA. What is that? That's the Future female, Business Leaders of uh, America. Females. <laughs> There's not being just females. Lying all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get females in there. <laughs> but I was, I was a part of the FBLA, the um, vice president of student council. Let's see. I was trying oh, to think of some other things. Yeah, right. My favorite thing was we pitched quarters 
in between classes. Somebody's here. Oh, they're here. The special okay. guests here. But hey. we pitched quarters so I would get enough lunch money so I could buy two lunches. Uh -huh. Oh, look there. Well, I was home. Oh, you're so funny. And see, Aiden, did not, he didn't even want to take lunch today. He said, I'm not going to be hungry. Okay. Do, does You'll he know have, tomorrow. Does he have any money in case he gets hungry? I offered money. He said, no, I don't want anything. It's, he'll be okay. Yeah. He'll He's got to learn. That's right. He will learn today that he was too hungry, yeah. and tomorrow and he'll take some money. or lunch. I will pick him up from well, today. You're going to have to go buy that hardest right there because he's going to be starving. <laughs> I do. I, I do work for someone who does. That's my lunch break. I'll go pick him up, take him home, and go back to work. Oh, okay. I, mean, I could put him on a bus, but uh -huh. that's I choose to do that. <clears throat> right. I want to take him to school, and I want to pick him up. Hey, that's fine. So I, I mean, there's nothing something, wrong with that. Right. Uh, you know, my too much happens on the buses. Well, let me tell you, I, the fun stuff. Uh -uh. I yeah. had, I had a, <laughs> people get put out the windows and stuff. No, I had a heart attack last year when my grandson in Indiana started, he went to like pre-K, the four yeah. year old and they were putting him on a school bus. And oh, I'm that's, like, that's scary. let me tell you, I was like, you are kidding me. But all he wanted to do was ride that he school bus. Ride the bus. But I will have to say they live out in rural Indiana. Mm hmm. I mean, they ride to the bus stop. All Indiana was rural. Well, <laughs> not quite like theirs, but right. they ride down to the bus stop on a four wheeler. Oh, okay. They go down around their pond and driveway, and they're sitting down there on a four wheeler waiting for the bus. So, um, Jax loves it. So we got to see that video, and then um, they filmed it for us. Mm -hmm. I was like, please. And then the <laughs> first day they came home, and Amanda's sitting at the bus stop waiting on them. No, he's not getting off the bus. Nobody's oh getting off the bus. And so finally, you know, the bus driver opened Hard the window. He was asleep. Yes, <laughs> he done fell asleep on the bus ride home because it takes a little bit. He was on the bus. <laughs> the wheels so on the anyway, bus. But I mean, you know, we, we grew up riding a bus, but I, times were different. We did too. And I, did that's it, why I don't want my son on the bus. <laughs> well, you're probably too young, but did you drive a school bus? No, I never drove the school bus. I never did. But we, we did have teenagers we, driving in this. That we was, had the opportunity. That was not anything I was interested in. But I was busy cool. with other things. So I, I could. Mm -mm. Young adults would not have survived with me driving a bus. <laughs> no. I like my bus. I, I wanted a big hammer. <laughs> it tolerates all that crazy. Oh, my gosh. Uh, one year we had a fella like that. And then the next year we had a very pretty young lady. So. Said, but you behave you, then, said, right? You're getting off. I said, no, I'm going to go one more round. Yeah, but you know, the times are different now because the thing about it is, is back, back years ago when we were riding buses, mm -hmm. I mean, like a lot of families just had one car. Exactly. My dad took the car to work and yep. my mom stayed home. And so, I mean, we had to ride the bus. There was no, it wasn't like it was an option. You didn't have car lines then. Exactly. And people taking you, your mm. parents taking you to school. You, you rode were, a school uh, bus. Well, there were many times. That was an advantage for my brother and I because we lived way out. We had to take the bus at one right. time. If we missed the bus, we missed the bus, Mama. Well, we didn't go to school that day because right. <laughs> it was going to be a minute before she got herself out of the bed. So right. That yeah. She learned that lot. real quick. Yeah. Yeah. She learned uh -huh. real quick how to fix that, though. Yeah. You probably missed a lot of buses. Oh, but you know, I can remember walking to the bus to... stop when it was still a little bit dark. <laughs> Watch in the rain yes yes you know all the things that you know we just i in mean that's snow. what you did well see i like was walk through the snow <laughs> no, no, no i didn't go all that no. far now when we had now, my snow. daddy walked 10 feet in the snow three oh, yeah. miles yeah. Uphill. Uphill. uphill both ways right, right. <laughs> and see i was i went to a, a a small school in charleston and it was way distance from my house i was in a farming community there were there were there were fields everywhere around me and no uh -huh. neighbors and no buses, you know, so we rode to school either with the neighbor, which was a mile away, well, or my mother. <laughs> no, no, I wasn't. <laughs> and so I moved from there, from this very small school, to Kennedy Middle School here uh -huh. in eighth grade. Uh -huh. And it was like a whole nother universe. And I was terrified, y'all. Well, I was absolutely were, terrified. I put you up on a pedestal. <clears throat> new girl, new uh, girl. Well, it, was, it was rough. It was, it was rough. I bet. And, and <clears throat> my biggest memory from middle school and high school is the hallway situations. Because somebody mm. always like would target me because I was the new girl or I was this or I was that. And it was always just, I wouldn't know them, but they had, they were upset with me and I didn't know why. And I didn't know what I did, you oh, know, girls, it yeah. was, it was yeah. always girls. Always and it was had always that pretty hair in middle school. Yeah. Um, yes. And, and I, it was always, <laughs> we were jealous. always had struggles. I always had struggles. So I was always trying to just stay out of the way and not get in trouble. <laughs> yeah. The um, testosterone is leaving. All right. So, <laughs> 
Okay, so we need listen. some balance here. Yes. Uh, Donna's saying no sound. Hey, guys out there watching us on Facebook, let us know. Or do y'all not have any sound? Because we've changed nothing here in the studio. So let's just um, let us know about that, okay, please? Put that in the feed. We sure are making enough she noise. Said, I know, right? Wow. I know it. So, wow. um, so we're going to bring our special guest on. They're here in the studio, okay. and we're not going to keep them waiting. Hallelujah. That way, if they they can't stay the whole time, we can get. I want you to hear. Yes. Uh, hear from them this morning. I know uh, they've probably got a really good message for you. Mm -hmm. So those of you watching us on Facebook, uh, Christy says she can hear. Okay. Us. Hey. Listen. Go ahead and share this <laughs> message. Bring it to the top of your feed and for your friends to see because we're going to take a very short break, just long enough to get our guests set up on some microphones Hallelujah! and get them in here in the studio. And we're going to start that. But don't go anywhere because even after we're finished with the special guest spot and all that, we've still got our word of the day and some this or, this or that. This and or some, that. Yeah. Some this or that. This or that. Uh, community cabinet. Oh yeah, we gotta things. do. Okay, Let's we'll do, do we'll do quick. community happenings and then we'll bring our guest on. Yes. So here we go. Let me find it right here. Mm -hmm. Look at how pale it is. No, you don't. All right, Bill, what you got? Um, well, when I was at um, March for Jesus, I was uh, what do they call when you walk around shaking hands, kissing babies. Public, public relations, yeah, I was fellowship, public relations. Mark fellowship, fellowship, soliciting yeah. Jesus. Yeah. And I, um, <laughs> they had one fellow was a rapper. He went up there and rapped a couple of songs, and mm -hmm. I was highly impressed with him. Okay. Yes. Um, the, the man's got skills. Um, it was very, it was calming. You know, mm -hmm. most right. time rapping, you you, you get worked yeah, up. Yeah, but this was calming. I Ooh. mean, it, you could tell Jesus was with him. Mm -hmm. I grabbed him. He's gonna actually be on the show. In a couple of weeks. Okay, so yes. that's gonna Hallelujah. be good. Another fellow. I, I what got was his to, name? Do you recall? I do not. See, that's what happens when we get I've old. We lose our hair. Well, it's in the <laughs> calendar. <laughs> it's on our calendar. We can look it's, it up. Yeah, I'll try to what, remember. Okay. What did your mom do for a living? <laughs> I can't recall. Well, exactly. <laughs> um, another fellow I met was uh, Michael Fogarty. Okay. Yes. Um, he's going to be doing a downtown revival Saturday, September first, from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. It's on the downtown green. All right. It's 836 Reynolds Street, Augusta, Georgia. That's the same place at the... Um, that's the Commons. That's the Commons. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's where it's going to be. It's going to be 836 Reynolds Street, Augusta. Live worship, speakers, food, why available, activities, food. and fellowship. He's going to feed everybody that comes down there. Awesome. And it's um, free. Yes, yeah, hamburger, hot free dogs. Free food. Everybody. Free. Yes. So, you course, know the Lord will be but there. But you know, you know the, here's the thing that's so great yes. about that is that downtown Augusta there's so many people walking right. and out and about and those that man that you can reach I don't have the speakers here but one of them is a uh, good friend of mine in Dana's he's from Grace Farms his name is uh, Pastor Mark Becklenburg Ble Becklenburg Beckenbecker or something yeah, like Blacken, that. Black, I can't ever I pronounce his name. Please forgive us, sir, Mark. for yes. slaughtering oh, your name. A, yeah, oh, Mark name. knows. It's <laughs> a long name, but Pastor we love Mark. him. Yes, Pastor, Pastor Mark. Mark. Awesome. Um, so. He's going to be one of the guest speakers, and it's, it's worth it just to go see him. And um, this, again, is happening Saturday. What day? What date? September 1st. September, September 1st. I'm going to try my best to get us a table and, down there and sit up and, you know, give some T-shirts awesome. away and stuff like and that. And the time frame this event starts when? 10.30 a.m. 10.30 a.m. 10 to 6. 10 to 6. 10 to 6. Food will be free and while it's available. Wow. Awesome. That's wonderful. I'm going to... Um, I'll get all the information in one second. Y'all keep talking. Okay. But anyway, so that's something coming up. Anybody else got any other events that they need to announce coming up? With You know, this time of year with school starting and stuff, things seem to slow down just a little, a little bit. It's a little lull. That's right. A little lull in a lot of the activities. You know, we've just gone through summer and VBSs and all the things that people are doing. I do know that um, we're going to be planning soon. I know April's working on doing another paint party. That's another awesome. fundraiser. That was so much fun. We did. We had fun. So awesome. uh, we'll, we will announce that again. When yeah, we're we're going to be we'll also those. be having another deliverance conference okay. in do September. You, in September. I don't know why I'm thinking of the 8th. Uh, I think they haven't arranged it. It was a, a throw yeah. toss up Kinda, about okay. the date. Be so we'll keep them. That. We will keep them up on that and uh, the dates on that. I want to say it's in Hilton Head. Where did they say it was going to be? No, that I don't know. It, it's okay. in South. Oh, it's Sumter, South Carolina. It's going to oh. be in Sumter. Okay. Okay. Special that's Freedom right. Network yes. will be going to Sumter, South Carolina. Okay, yes. awesome. So that's exciting. We've got a lot of exciting things coming up. You know, this time of year we start 
you know, once school gets settled in and stuff, we start with fall festivals and all the different things that, that you know, churchills will yes. be doing and outreaches. I know Hope Ministry, this is their time of year to really be gearing up. Hope Ministries is out of our church mm -hmm. um, with Janae and them. And um, they have a really big thing they do at the Salvation Army yes. and all that coming up. And, and they're always collecting gloves and blankets mm -hmm. because they minister to a lot of people that are cold. Even if yeah. they have a home, they have heat issues. Right. And when they don't have homes, you really want to make sure that they have gloves, right. socks, mm -hmm. and So just blankets. we're going to keep you posted here on yes. our, you know, on our uh, page they of, do a great of job. events that are yes. coming up. But we do know that we're gearing up for all those kind of things. That's I know right. that I'm trying to get geared up. We've got Pastor Appreciation coming up at our church the first sunday in october and i'm fixing to call on a whole lot of people they just don't know it yet mm -hmm. and um I, so we're excited about all the stuff that's going on in our community also okay i'm uh, ready you ready okay downtown revival september 1st 2018 augusta commons line up from 10 to 11 will be three nails gospel praise team from 11 to noon speaker yohani aodani oh uh, and that's a that's okay a maybe uh, 12 to 1, ministries, food, and activities. 1 to 2 is Rock of Salvation. 2 to 3 is Mark Becklin. Blankenbeckler. That's it. Blankenbeckler. Blankenbecker. Like, Blanken. like the popcorn man. No, Blankenbeckler. Blanken Just pass the mark. Mr. Right? Yeah, yeah. Pass yeah. the mark. Pass the mark. Pass the mark. Pass the mark. Uh, then ministries, food, and activities, 3 to 4, and then 4 to 5 days to come, and then 5 to 6, Speaker Cliff Nobles. Okay. Now, I've oh. never heard of Cliff Nobles, but um, he's ending it out, so he must be pretty good. Okay, and also I want to say uh, Donna King says, Deanne and Friends, Friday, September 28th at Bath, 7 p.m. Bath, Pentecostal Holiness Church. It's a benefit singing and proceeds to go to their youth building fund. So you want to keep that in mind, too. And if I know Donna, there's probably going to be all kind of cakes and food and good hey, stuff. Cake. And I know it, right? All these homemade cakes and stuff. Anyway, okay, guys. So I have one more announcement. Okay, go ahead. Hope for the community, September the 28th. That event will be from um, 11 a.m. until 5 p.m. It will be at Osborne Park, which is over there behind Aiken High. Okay. Um, they're having jump houses for the little kid, a jump house for the, a bigger kids. They'll be <laughs> serving hot dogs. Um, we will have a uh, job... Um, opportunities available okay. and um and we're also ha we'll have flyers for the crisis pregnancy center there they won't be able to attend this year but they'll be coming next year and uh this event is really just to minister to the children of the area and okay. the families and they're taking donations for deodorant um i can't remember the other where where would these donations go? You Do can you, know? you can we, you can turn them in at University Parkway Church of God I'm or you can contact me and or you can contact me um, on Facebook, and I'll okay. pick them up. And they can, and this is Hope Ministries yes. thing, right? Oh, okay, and so you can check out. No, no, not Hope Ministries. This is Hope for the Community. This hope is, for the Community. This is Hope for the Community, okay. and it is specifically for that Smith Hazel Osborne Park area okay. right there behind Aiken High. Okay. okay. And the children in that community. Okay. Cool. A Han Village. I will be there area. as well, uh, representing the program that I work for. Okay. Because I work with young adults. Which is? WIOA. It's a federally funded program mm -hmm. where we help young adults who have barriers to employment find jobs and get training. Oh, so awesome. I'll be there doing awesome. that. There'll be free haircuts. Um, I will not be getting they're, haircuts. They're, helping, okay. <laughs> they're trying to help kid, help get the kids ready for school. And, I can you know, give just you one, but give them the things they need. Um, April, <laughs> April says Cliff Nobles is going to Belize with them to help speak. Oh, wow. All okay. right. Hey. Awesome. So let's do a couple shout outs Smaller. and then we're going to go take our break. Uh, guys, if you have any questions on any of these events, we will we will try to get them uh, to you each week. And as it gets closer in the dates, if you if you can send us an email at morningman999 at gmail.com, we'll try to get back to you on that. Yeah, we love giving you dates. shout out. Yeah. Uh, if you have We're going to butcher your name probably, but go ahead yeah, and send we'll us one. We'll get <laughs> okay, guys. Grace so, and mercy. Uh, don't go anywhere. Please, please, please. Uh, we've got Anthony Turner and Catherine Wade coming up next. And you are going to be so excited with this word that he's going to bring and Hallelujah. everything. So I encourage you to go ahead right now and click that share button yeah. right there. You see on the bottom of your screen so you can bring it up to the top of the feed and all your friends can see it and, and join us. I'm yeah, going to find gonna, us a song here and we're going to play a song. About to have two Turner man up in here. Uh -oh. That's what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, listen, listen, awesome. Tony Myers. Outside the Four Walls on WCC Wednesday mornings at 8.15 a.m. He is a sponsor 
Oh, he, he needs a sponsor. I he needs think. a sponsor. Okay. So if you would like to sponsor outside the four walls, awesome. WC, he comes on every Wednesday at 8 15. I listen to him going to work. Yes. I love it. Absolutely love his program. So thank you for being a part of 99.9. Tony, yeah, we fine. love you so much. Yes, we do. We, love we you really too. do. Okay. So let's like listen to some. Um, <laughs> Says uh, the man in the room. <laughs> righteousness, like peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Some Ron Cannoli. Don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be right back. Okay. Good morning. We are back. This is WUCC 99.9 FM Williston, where you get the meat to go with your daily bread. That's right. That's right. Daily bread. Yeah. So we're so excited here this morning. We have a couple of guests. Now, one's been here before, so she's, she's no, she's home here. I'm home. But we're excited. <clears throat> so I'm going to just introduce Miss Catherine to you and let her introduce our special guest, and then they can... Just kind of take over and tell all our listeners, okay? Okay. All right. Well, you have, um, we have Anthony Turner here with us today, and he is um, from 
Colorado Springs, um, but he first is from Alabama. For he, so he's a good Southern boy, <laughs> and um, except for, he's he's an Auburn fan. So we're gonna Ooh. go. Oh, we'll get him for that. Right. Right. For that. Yes. Oh. Uh, <laughs> we're not rolling with the tide, right? Okay. Uh, but he and I met um, last year. Was it last year? Yes. Last year, um, in um, on our trip to Israel, we had um, eighty-eight of us on a wonderful um, follow the footsteps of the um, Ark of the Covenant oh, wow. um, trip to Israel. And we were there um, just worshiping the Lord and, and releasing sound and teaching. And um, about halfway in, um, we God just p- kind of put us in each other's path. And we, we've been brother and sister since then. Yes. And uh, he's been here. Uh, he came in March. And then... Um, now he's back again. He's going to keep coming. We, we told him this time we were going to put him with a realtor so he could look for a house. <laughs> right, <never> right. <laughs> we haven't convinced him yet, but this is he Anthony to... Turner. He's um, he's the um, founder or co-founder of Destiny Ministries International, and he travels all over the world um, worshiping the Lord and um, and ministering to pastors, equipping pastors to um, meet their um, kingdom assignments um, yes. around the world. So here's Anthony. I'm so excited. Welcome, Welcome Anthony. Anthony. Thank you very much. It's a it's really a pleasure and an honor for me to be here. Well, Absolutely. we're glad to have you. We're so thankful you took out your time to come yes, out here. I know sure. it's early on a Monday morning, and I appreciate y'all coming out here. <laughs> it's great. And being a part. I know we were at the center Friday night, and we had to leave, but we were so excited, man. We were there for the worship. Uh, and you were just beginning to give the word, and we had to leave. It was like, oh my goodness! So I'm good. excited this morning um, awesome. to Bless hear his you. Heart. Uh, I prayed for you after we left because I didn't realize you were staying with uh, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, Paul Austin! Yeah. Oh wow! <laughs> Bless his heart. Yeah, he said hello too. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Lord. Oh, we love Paul and Christy. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Yeah. Well, we love Christy. <laughs> we just put up with Paul and Christy. All right. so. Oh my goodness! It's, he's he's a character, and uh, yes, he I, I, he's he's something else. And I, I've I've uh, loved being with them, but you never know. From one moment to the next, right. uh, what you're going to get with Paul. And you go south <laughs> <You're exactly. laughs> He's funny. I love him, though. But anyway, so just just tell us what's on your heart. We're excited. What what do you have for our listeners to hear? Because this is going out across the local radio, of course, yes. 99.9. Mm-hmm. But it's also going out on Facebook. Mm-hmm. So all our Facebook family are watching. We've got quite a few people watching and, us now. And on the World Wide Web, it's just going out. Yeah. And it will rebroadcast. So before you start, I'm glad I said that. I've got Audacity here. With your permission, I'm going to record what you have to speak or say and then okay, we will sure. be playing this on the radio at another time if okay. that's okay with you so i, I just be, wanted to make sure i'd be honored yes yes because, um, we'll make you sign something later mm-hmm. all right <laughs> we'll just Finger charge you <laughs> we'll just charge you i need your address <laughs> <laughs> fingerprints so, everything yeah yes. now we're all about DNA. joy so if you have yes. something scary and doomy <laughs> hold off on that <laughs> It is Monday, and the first day of school, we need joy. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. That's right. That's right. So it's, it's all yours. Okay, well, uh, first of all, uh, I am just, again, just blessed and honored to be uh, here, to be in South Carolina. It's actually just my second uh, time. The first time I ever came to South Carolina in this region was in, in March, uh, as Catherine said. And um, the thing that really surprised me if you want to be honest is uh want me to be honest is how the lord just um really sowed this region into my heart Mm. anytime that happens my first question to him you know when when i get a time to just kind of uh, reflect is what's that all about you know why why is it that that you've given me such a passion and such a heart for a region and generally, uh, with me, because I travel so much, I'm I'm usually um, on the road somewhere in the United States or out uh, about three weeks out of every month. Mm. And so I get a chance to see a lot of different people, different, uh, mostly a lot of believers right. uh, all over the world. And uh, the one thing that I'd say about what, um, what I feel like um, is that there's... 
there's something stirring in this region. There's there's yeah. there is a, a groundswell if, uh, of of uh, excitement and anticipation, mm -hmm. and to me, I feel as though it's the beginning of revival, a re the beginning of a move of God. Mm -hmm. um, many times, I think we 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 expect God to move in large uh, places right. or we expect him to move in in high profile uh, ways but if you really look at every uh, revival every move of God it's happened in some very not well-known places right. and even That's even right. even with Jesus Jesus himself uh, you know, was of Nazareth, and and one of the disciples, <laughs> pre disciples, I'll say, the question was, can anything good yeah. come out of Nazareth? <laughs> right, right. And uh, his brother said, come and see. And right. and and I feel like that's part of uh, what I've had the privilege of uh, doing is coming to see. I've 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 had opportunities to see some. Um, you know, now you folks, but s some other uh, ministry leaders and some other intercessors and, and people who have a heart and a passion for for this region. Um, I've spent uh, most of the time in Aiken, but just just this region as a whole. Mm -hmm. And there is a there is a uh, we use this word remnant of mm -hmm. of uh, sons and daughters who are saying yes to what. Uh, the father is speaking to them. And one of the things that I, I, I talked about a little bit the other night, and if you don't mind, I'd like to kind of touch on oh, that, no, go right that ahead, reality. Um, I, I, I love history and I love to study, uh -huh. um, especially moves of God. And, and, and one of the things that I've, uh, kind of looked at is the, what I call the, the rise and fall of revivals, mm -hmm. you know, what 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 started those? What caused those? And then why weren't they sustained? And um, and I feel as though every time we've had one of those kind of moves of God, um, we're getting closer and closer to the Father revealing the heart to the heart of us, not just how to launch that, but how to sustain it. Mm -hmm. And um, and one of the things that I see that I feel like is uh, very um, critical in in sustaining what God wants to do is having a people who are uh, selfless. Uh, mm -hmm. Many times, what 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 we see is um, uh, there will be a group of people who will cry out to the Lord, and and they'll cry out for their region or they'll cry out for their city, mm -hmm. and then when when God starts to move, it all they become almost po possessive. Mm. And territorial. Oh yeah. But I, but I, but I believe he's raising up a company of people who they just want what he wants. Yes. Right. Absolutely. And yes. so uh, with that, I, I there's yeah. when I when I when I came into this region, I really felt um, the atmosphere was charged with expectancy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the Lord gave me a, a word recently about that. Um, the other thing that I think happens whenever. Uh, you're, we're about to see transformation, reformation, is that there is uh, this expectancy that um, God's people have. Many times we don't have vocabulary for it. That's right. mm -hmm. So I, you know, I think about what the scripture says in Isaiah chapter 43 when he says, um, Be, uh, Behold, I show you a new thing. And before it springs forth, I tell you of it. And so there, you know, the former things are come to pass, he says, and then the, a new thing do I declare. And I, and many times when, when, you know, I've heard a lot of people as I've traveled around the country, I've heard a lot of people say, I, I feel like God is about to do something. I don't know what it is. And you'll hear that immediately after. I don't know what it is. There's a, there's just this expectancy in their heart. And I, I, I begin to see the Lord raising up uh, people to give vocabulary to what he's doing in the earth. And mm -hmm. so for me, what I'm seeing is just uh, this selfless hunger and desire mm. to see 
God transform a community, not just yeah. not just in church. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the thing that uh, uh, is another is another indication of and something very unique about what he's doing now. This is not just uh, a church thing. This is this is I'm seeing people uh, have um, a renaissance of the way they think about the marketplace, the way they think about uh, one of my friends talks about it this way, the seven spheres of cultural influence or the seven mountains seven of mountains. cultural inf influence. So, uh, you know, religion, government, uh, business, family, education, arts and entertainment and media and the thing that I, I, I would encourage this region for uh, about, and I think one of the things that I, li I like to say is, um, I think we're in a place where we're about to see, um, you know, when we look at our nation, sometimes and we see all of the unrest and all of the things that are happening, I, I personally see that myself i see it as we're on the verge of transformation i think that all of the of course the enemy would love to try to highlight all of the anger and all of right, the, the right. all of the division and all of that that's happening but honestly to me that's a precursor right. to Catalyst. an emergence of a people of god a company of god that 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 have the word of the lord to bring um, reformation in a time when when there's chaos. Uh, all through scripture, if you look historically, I mean, from the beginning of time, every time things get to be dark and bleak, there is a, a company, a remnant, a, 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 either a person or a group of people that rise up mm -hmm. and, and, and you begin to see a, a shift and a transformation. And I'm reminded of what the scripture says in Isaiah chapter 60, when it says, arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord Hallelujah. is yes. risen upon you. Amen. Now, verse two says, for darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness or deep darkness the people. And, and we can't highlight, you know, many people can major on that, but that's not what we're to major on because I personally believe that that is a Holy Ghost setup. Right. Darkness covers the earth, gross darkness the people. And then he says, but his light shall arise upon you. Yes. And mm -hmm. nations shall come to your light mm -hmm. and kings to the brightness of your shining. So I, I, I think that a lot of the chaos we see is because people are frustrated. They don't know what to do. They don't know right. what to, they don't know where to turn. And if anybody stands up, just like uh, Peter did on the day of Pentecost, when 120 people came falling out of, a, of an upper room. And, and, and you know, it's funny because uh, the Lord had, obviously designed that when all of these people from all of these other nations mm -hmm. just happen to be in Jerusalem. Be. Yes. And on this day, these people fall out of this upper room and these people look a little weird and crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> but in the midst of that, see joy, joy does that to you. Yes. It'll make you look, right. it'll make you look weird when, especially yes. when, when everybody's saying, what are you so joyful about? Uh -huh. There's, but but we know there's there's something that's going on and but father would have a voice in in this case peter to rise up and give um vocabulary to what's taking place right. and peter says they aren't drunk like you think they are they aren't crazy like you think right. they are uh but this is that this is that that was spoken by the prophet Joel. This is that that was prophesied uh, in this time uh, uh, before when Joel saw a day far ahead. And I believe that we are living in a day that not only has the scripture, but other men and women of God. I remember hearing uh, stories about Maria Woodworth Etter, hearing stories about um, uh, William Seymour, who during the Azusa Street Revival mm -hmm. or during Maria Woodworth Edder's time, they all saw a day ahead that they said, you think what God is doing now is amazing? 
there's a day coming. Right. Yes. That's really going to be amazing. That's going to really be amazing. And I honestly believe that we are uh, at the precipice, at the threshold of that. Hallelujah. Amen. Wow. That's, that's so what exciting, I'm about. too. Amen. That is so exciting. You don't have to stop there. I'm, just, I'm <laughs> sure you got more to say. I'm just no, sitting once here. Once again, going. this is Anthony Turner. Yes. So. Joining us this morning. Amen. Well, I. the. I, I just feel like one of the things that is is pertinent, however, is not to not to get caught up many times, just like with uh, Peter, when he, uh, you know, the the disciples were in this boat. I, I find that very interesting because the day, you know, if you, you do a little bit of the backstory, they had seen all of these signs and wonders and miracles that that Jesus had done the day before. And uh, it got to be nightfall. You know, you're talking about he had just they had just seen him feed 5,000 men. Mm -hmm. um, theologians say it was probably about 20,000 people out there because mm -hmm. it only counted the men. Right. But about 5,000 men were fed with five loaves of bread and two fish. And they had been with Jesus. Um, this He had been teaching them for days when this miracle occurred. And so the people were still there. But then the Bible says that Jesus told the disciples, you go on before. You get in the boat and you go on before. And he went up into the mountains to spend time with the Father. And... Um, as he as he finished and completed his time of prayer and his time of fellowship with the Lord, the Bible says he looked and the boat was about in the midst of the sea and he said he saw them toiling. And I, I love this because uh, when you read that account, of course, we know Jesus began to walk on the water. The thing that's interesting to me is that he was not walking to the boat. If you really look at that scripture, uh, it said that when the disciples saw him, they thought, first of all, that he was an aberration, a ghost or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it also says he would have passed them by uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. uh, because he had already given them a word. He said, let us uh, you guys go ahead, go to the other side. Uh, it's very interesting to me that I think one of the things that is very critical for the body of Christ to grasp is that if you've got a word from the Lord, it doesn't matter what storms arise. Mm -hmm. There's enough power in the word that the Lord spoke to get you where you need to go. Amen. Oh, that's good. Amen. And so he was he was on his way to the other side right. because he had already given them a word. But they were toiling and the Bible says he would have passed them by, but they cried out when they discovered and realized it was him, they still weren't too sure because then Peter says, if it is you, let me come out to you on the water. And of course, Jesus speaks one word, come. Mm -hmm. And we know uh, Paul, Peter gets out of the boat. He starts to walk uh, on the water. And, you know, I, I, I think that there's this ph phenomenal picture of what happens when sometimes we we get a word from the Lord mm -hmm. and I and I, I want to speak to visionaries right now and speak to a lot of people who um, uh, have gotten a word from the Lord it's it may seem absolutely absurd <laughs> but if you've gotten a response from the Lord to say come or go or do, you just launch. And so Peter, on that word, stepped out of the boat and started to walk. Now, of course, part of my assignment, I think, in the body is to make us aware that anytime you're going to do something great, uh, that you've been given a word from the Lord to do something great, A, it's going to be above your pay grade. <laughs> so right. you're, yeah. right. you're going to need the grace of God. Right. B, don't be surprised when opposition happens. I mean, it's it will happen. It's going to yeah. happen because we are we we're talking about the clash of two worlds. We're right. talking about the clash of two realms. And um I always say that uh if you are if you have the ability right now to inhale and exhale, 
If you live on the planet and you are not six foot under, if you can breathe, you are the solution to a. You are literally God's solution to a problem that exists in the earth. Yes, yes. right. Mm -hmm. I like that. Every every human being was uh, was designed with a purpose to uh, bring uh, God's glory into some. Whether mm -hmm. it's one of those seven spheres, uh, whether it's one person, you've you've got the glory of God in you to bring uh, light to dark places. Mm -hmm. And of course the enemy is going to always try to attack that because anywhere light shines, revelation comes and freedom comes. Freedom comes wherever the light of God shines. Right. And so, um, I, you know, so Peter gets out of the boat and he starts to walk to Jesus on the water. And then it says, and when he saw the winds boisterous, the thing that's interesting is that the winds were boisterous before he stepped out of the boat. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, but what, what constantly happens, all of the situations in life are, are uh, that are trying to get you distracted from purpose. Mm -hmm. right. Um, what I'm beginning to learn day by day, every day, I, you know, it's funny. Um, I got, I got called in the ministry when I was, um, 19 years old and I was just a hotshot preacher and I thought I had all of the answers and, you know, and this, that, and the other, and I'm a little farther along these days <laughs> than I was then. But the thing that I've, uh, that's happened with me and that I've discovered is that, um, I, I've, I've gotten to that point where I'm more dependent on him than I've ever been. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and with that, uh, he constantly invites me to do things that I always have thought were impossible. Mm -hmm. I, I've been, I've been invited to do things. I'm like, how can you do that? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And then when you start to take your first couple of steps, then the wind gets louder and <laughs> and and the uh, your attention starts to focus on the naysayers and everything your lack of uh ability your lack of this your lack of this you start to see all of the lack mm -hmm. and but in the midst of that i love what happened with peter when he in a moment got distracted and started to see all of the lack of his ability to walk on water you know it's like one of those cartoons you take a couple of steps out and then you realize wait i can't do this <laughs> right right and so in the midst of that you know he says beginning to sink and he cried out to the lord now here's the beautiful thing about this i don't know how far he had gotten away from the boat but regardless of that he and jesus had to walk back so he had to walk back Mm -hmm. to the right. boat uh -huh. so many times just because you start to sink or begin to sink that's that's why we have him that we can cry out to and he'll grab us and then the miracle still happens you get back in the boat and the funny thing is of course uh, at the very beginning of that it says that jesus saw them in the midst of the sea toiling he has this encounter with peter where peter walks on the water begins to sink cries out to him and they both walk back to the boat and then here comes another miracle the next thing it says and immediately they were at the shore mm -hmm. so they went from the middle of the sea to all of a sudden you're there and and i say that because may, maybe um the things that god has called you to do you find yourself in the middle of it and it seems impossible and seems like you've run out of resources, you've run out of stamina, you've run out of energy, you've run out of faith, you've run out of all of that. And yet we cry out to the Lord. And I love what it says in uh, Psalm 3 when it says, I cried unto the Lord with my voice and he heard me out of his holy hill. And then the next part of that says, David says, I laid down and I went to sleep. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and when I awake, the Lord had sustained me. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I feel like uh, the impossible, of course, requires the miraculous. Mm. But it, it really just requires someone 
who's willing to say yes to the father mm -hmm. and and even uh mm -hmm. risk looking ridiculous uh -huh. <laughs> and so uh i i i pray one of the craziest prayers you know have you i don't know if you've ever done this i don't know if you've ever prayed a prayer and then afterwards you think about it and you were like, what was I thinking? <laughs> right. Yes. yes. What was what I, I thinking? And I, what did I say? Yes. Yeah. And I did that once. I, I said, Father, I was reading something about all of the great men and women of God of faith, all of uh -huh. the great men and women of God who have done mighty exploits with the Lord. And there's always that moment when you are going to look ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you going to, you're going to look like, you know, and, and I said, father, if there's, if there's someone that you need to do something mighty and it, but they're going to look ridiculous, pick me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and as soon as the words came out of my mouth, I was just like, do you just realize what you said? Right. right. And so, um, I, I've been on this journey. Mm -hmm where um, over the course of the last several years, where for my heart, I've, I've f found that those situations kind of strip you of all of the things. It strips you of the fear of man. It strips you of your, uh, your inadequacies. Mm -hmm. It strips you of the fear of, well, I don't have what, y you just kind of, you're just out there. You're out there in the middle of the of this rising tide of storm mm -hmm. and and you might look ridiculous you may look absolutely you know you may be humiliated i'm sure mm -hmm. that there was a moment that peter was thinking you know what i left the safety of the boat <laughs> to come out here <laughs> Trying to be a man of faith and power, and now, now my, I'm sinking. And now my feet are wet. And now my feet are wet, <laughs> and my knees are wet. And you know, it, you, you get when you get into that place. There's this moment where you um, you have the you have to fight humiliation. Mm -hmm. And I'll go back to Psalm three again because David starts off by saying, "How are they increased that trouble me?" Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Many there be that rise up against me, and many there be who say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. It's that place right there that I found. That's the place where miracles take place. Amen. It's almost as though when, when everything looks as though it, you know, Aiken, South Carolina, or this city, I mean, really? You're expecting God to move here? Uh, you're expect, but I, I was just uh, recently this year. I was in Wales, mm -hmm. a little city in Wales called Swansea, and uh, this is the place where the father you where the father decided he was going to raise up a little small framed man by the name of Evan Roberts. Mm -hmm to preach for two years that would launch a move of God that would affect the entire world. Mm. Mm. I've been to Swansea and, mm. uh, and I've been to Mariah Chapel. And the thing that's interesting to me is now um, Mariah Chapel only has four members. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a church of, uh, that could seat about 450 people. Mm -hmm. And right now there are only four members and they haven't had a pastor in 16 years. And, and, um, many of the, um, believers there in Wales say that the church in Wales is dead. And, and yet there was something in me that felt like I've, I've been invited to come back in October and actually do a night of worship at Mariah chapel. And I feel like there's going to be a um, a restoration and revival of the move of God. I, I feel yeah. like Father is digging, uh, redigging those wells. Yes. Mm. So there are a couple of things I want to tie all of this together because I believe that 
It's in those times when we begin to sink and we look like we've just been humiliated. It looks like all hope is lost. That's when we cry out to Jesus and he lifts us and we see two miracles. We walk back on the water with Jesus back to the boat. And then the very thing that we were called to do that seemed like we were not going to get there we look up and immediately we're at our destination Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because now we know we can't do it without him and so and 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 also what i believe is that i know that there are many i call them prayer warriors who've cried out for the destiny of a people or the destiny of a region, whether that's, uh, you know, this region of South Carolina, what was God's intent when he brought the, the people that he brought here? What is it? What is the glory of the Lord that is supposed to, uh, shine from this region? Mm -hmm. Someone has seen it more than likely one of our one of our listeners has seen it you folks you, mm-hmm. the reason that you do morning manna right. the reason right. that you are right. uh this joy uh, the this this uh uh radio station is about joy is because someone has a revelation that the joy of the lord is our strength right. someone has a revelation that there is a divine purpose and destiny for this region and you were talking about uh doing something totally out of character Yes. Um, regardless, and that's this radio station. Yes. Oh, <laughs> We're all volunteers. None of us right. did radio professionally. Um, and if you go back to Your Morning Man and Number One, you would realize that. <laughs> 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 but the, uh, even well, the owner had no, you know. No really, history yeah. in radio. And I remember him saying when the Lord spoke to him and told him, hey, I want you to build me a radio right. station. And he said, uh, how do I do that, Lord? I mean, you know what I mean? Yes. You step out and don't and don't you ever say that anything I tell you to do is too small or too whatever. This is going to be bigger than what you think. Wow. And so the station started out that way, and now it reaches all wow. across. And, I mean, just multiple. I mean, just the people and the guests that God has aligned us with and brought us out here. Yes. For people. We have people watching on our Facebook page from Texas. From We get them from oh, Australia. Wow. We get them from Pakistan. all over the world. Pakistan. That, that watch us. Yes. And um, we have a group that watches from Pakistan. Mm -hmm. They get in their house, a big group of people, 30 people, and watch the show. So we can bring a word to them and bring joy and bring hope. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think about when you were saying that, I was thinking about how this radio station has, how it began. Yes. And where God's taking it. Yes. And and leading us all to, because none of us at all, I mean, this was so out of our comfort zone. The first time these mics went on live and we're like across the airwaves (laughs) and we're going. You pointed at me, I was like. Uh, Good morning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so I love hearing that. And yes. Hearing that word, you know. And so I, I part of, um, part of what I feel like my calling is to, especially our nation, um, is to encourage us and remind us that if you've got a word from the Lord, even when the storms come up, come against you. And then even when you go from there to go more ridiculous, because mm-hmm. now you're in a boat. He's told you to go across <laughs> to the other side. Right. You're in a boat and you're toiling halfway. Uh-huh. And now you even get more ridiculous. And I found out that that's what he does. You know, he'll he'll call you to do something. And then and st- I, I remember at my lowest low many times, you know, I the Lord has given me a word and I'm trying to do that. And I'm re- I'm I'm encountering all of this opposition and I'm going to him crying. I can't do it. And not only does he give you an encouraging word or not only in those moments, what he's done is he's even made the vision bigger. He's, he's, he's asked me to do something more ridiculous. (laughs) And, uh, and I'm like, Oh, wait, I haven't even, I haven't even accomplished this yet. And now you've expanded it to a point of absurdity. Mm -hmm. Mm. And, you know, I'll I'll share this. One of my favorites, my my favorite stories in the Bible is that of uh, Gideon Mm -hmm. and and Gideon's army, because Uh they were going, of of course, they were going up. uh, Gideon had 20, 32,000 men 
going up against 166,000 Midianites. Mm -hmm. 166,000 to 32,000. That's four to one. Mm -hmm. And I I, I keep getting this picture of of, uh, Gideon's captains getting with their companies and saying, (laughs) all right, men, all we have to do is four, it's four to one. We can do that. We can do that. <laughs> Each one of you take out four and it's good. We'll call it a day. We'll praise God. And, you know, they're all excited. And then God tells Gideon, no, you got too many and you need to send some home. And he says, send the ones that are afraid home. And so Gideon makes this annou- announcement. You know that he did not expect for the, the results to happen. He says, all right, guys, you know what? Even... I just heard a word from the Lord. (laughs) That's always dangerous, but I just heard a word from the Lord. All of you who are afraid, go home. And 22,000 men go home. Their little tails and ran. 22,000 of 32,000 go home. So now you are left with 10,000 against 116,000. So now you've just gone from four to one to 16 to one. (laughs) And, now your 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 captains are really trying to do because uh, some of your captains are gone too, by the way. Right. But now your the captains that are left are really trying to. Uh, they've got to pull out the best uh, motivational speech they ever have, and they're they're speaking to these. And now these people are responding. And then God speaks again and says, "You still got too many." Mm-hmm. And the next thing he says is, uh, of course, we know he says. Uh, take them to the water, and here's the key. I'm going to try them for you. In this in this step, I'm going to try them for you. All of the people that were afraid are going gone. So who do we have left that that's not ready? You have the fearful, and then this next wave of people are the selfish. Mm-hmm. And when when this gets pared down, you go from uh, ten thousand. 9,700 more are what the Father asked you to send home. So you're left with 300. So I, I like to say it this way. We went from 4 to 1 to 16 to 1 to, oh, my God, to 1. <laughs> what are we going to do? And and it's with that. It's like every time you inquire of the Lord, he, he, he asks you to do something more and more impossible. Mm. Mm-hmm. But in the midst of that, there were two things that happened. Because the last thing you want is to have people in the foxhole with you who are scared because they're right. going to they're gonna run at the sign of trouble. The last thing you want are people in the foxhole with you who are selfish That's right. because they're going to leave you uh, unprotected. Right. But in this moment, what happens is God gets 300 men who are who are now they look utterly ridiculous there's no way you're going to beat 166,000 but they go up against uh, 166,000 men and with the with the hand of God and with the miraculous of God the the victory is secured and so i encourage uh the people your your listeners here uh at uh, WUCC i i encourage those of you in Pakistan and and other places, uh, that even though it may seem insurmountable, you and God make a majority. And if He's spoken a word to you, He says this, and this is what I love. He says, "My word is settled in heaven." In Psalm one nineteen and verse eighty nine, "My word is set, settled in heaven." And He also says, "He who has begun a good work in you shall perform it, Amen. shall complete it." Because Mm -hmm. he is Alpha and Omega. He's the author and the finisher. So I feel as though the journey that you as a station have started on and bringing joy and releasing joy. Why joy? Because Nehemiah says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. I believe that there are people that are being strengthened by by what you're doing, by what others are doing. And they're stepping into their place. Uh, of assignment and calling and purpose um, they've they, some of them have been with you personally every step of the way right. and they know they know what God has done mm-hmm. and uh, they also know what has happened in them because of your 
uh, saying yes. Uh, and, and, and that's why I say, I, I, Father, he, he looks for those people who are willing to be humiliated. You, like you said, the, they pointed to you and the first thing, you, you know, the first thing that happens, I remember the first time that I ever did anything publicly, I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> you know, but it's in those moments mm -hmm. that his, his, his grace over, uh, overshadows you and you're able to do mighty exploits. I believe that that's what this is about to happen in this region. I believe this is a region where we are about to see a people galvanized coming together to do mighty, mighty exploits yes. in the name of the Lord. Amen. Um, let me give a couple of shout outs if y'all mind. Okay. Go ahead, Got, uh, Joyce Jacobs, uh, Becky Wheeler. Says, yes, Anthony, just what I needed to hear. <laughs> uh, we got Jim Witten is uh, watching, uh, Travis Watkins, uh, Danette Rowe, Tab Butler, Andrea Jackson Turner says hello. Cynthia Mitchell is watching. <laughs> hey, Cynthia. And Amanda Pageant's watching. So. Yes, Stephanie um, King. One real quick thing uh, the lady sitting beside you, she. She is allowing me to do something that's entirely out of my comfort zone. But if you would, just tell them where you're from and what you're in charge of, and because it's close to my heart. So, well, I'm um, the executive director of Life Choices Pregnancy Care Center, and um, we work with um, people that have just lost their way. They've lost their sense of destiny. Maybe they never had it, um, but they're dealing with um, childish parenting issues, um, life issues in general. And Bill's been fabulous to come and talk to our men because I don't know if y'all have noticed or not, but our men, our young men out here don't have mentors. They don't have right. daddies and they don't have mentors and they don't, they don't have any men that speak into their lives, anything that is godly, constructive. Um, let me help you send you in the right direction. And Bill has stepped into that position. Um, I think, um, I don't know if he knew what he was getting into, but he got out of the boat yeah. and, of the boat. and he, and he, um, you know, he, I know, I mean, he, they, they both, you know, each time they walks out with those young men, they both look like, you know, um, the tornado has hit them, <laughs> but I know that it's been good because it's been God, but it's been, they've maybe for the first time had a man speak into their lives in a way that um, uplifted them, encouraged them to mm -hmm. be better, yes. to do yeah. different than they're doing right now. And so, you know, sort of along with that, listening to the story about the boat, you know, we always get so focused on Peter and him getting out of that boat. And I started thinking, well, what were those other guys doing? Yeah, right. Why didn't they call and say, Looking Lord, you know, <laughs> Lord, don't, and, get you out, know, don't get out. And they, you know, they didn't, they could have had the chance to walk on water too. And they, right. but I, you know, I was thinking, what were they doing? And I think it's what we do. Yeah. We put our head down and we're so focused on what I've got to do today, what I've got to do to get to the next thing or, you know, to overcome the next thing that we don't even look up to see what God might want to do yeah. in our circumstances mm -hmm. or in me. And just listening to you, I'm like, I don't want to be one of those that just gets to the other side yeah. along with everybody else. I want to mm -hmm. be I want to be Peter. I want to be, and I want to be, you know, and I think in each of us, God has sown that seed of destiny and, and we want to say greatness. And I think we have, um, in our country, we have a distorted view of what greatness yes. is. Yes. You know, to me, Bill exhibits greatness mm -hmm. when he shows up, when he's been working for hours and hours and hours, and he exhibits greatness because he shows up in that pregnancy center. And he may be too tired to be there, but he exhibits greatness by saying, you know what, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to serve those young men. I'm right. going to serve Catherine and Gay and those in, that men in the life choices. And, you know, so greatness does doesn't mean I'm standing on a stage or right. I'm sitting in a, in a radio um, studio or, you know, anything that's a platform. Greatness means I show up for my kid, mm -hmm. you know, every day right. and I love them and I show up for my husband or my mm -hmm. wife. Mm -hmm. Greatness can be anything that I do that is 
not selfish. Yes. Right. You know, and going back even to the fear, you know, y'all, we're in a season where God's calling us. Our thing, our theme for him being here this week has been take your place. Yes. Mm-hmm. And there's a place for each of us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't have yeah. to look at, you know, well, they they do that. Yeah. You know, I, I can't do that. Yes, you can. Mm-hmm. You can do something. You, you might not be able to do that because that's not what God's called you to right. do. And we're not in competition e- with exactly. each other. <laughs> and I don't know about other areas, and maybe I'm all wet, but, y'all, we've got a strong spirit of competition among in believers yes. and in our community and you know churches compete against each other and you yeah. can't talk to them and you can't tell this you always time we got to come together because right. if we're competing we're not unified right. mm-hmm. and if we're going to ever speak with one voice mm-hmm. which is what brings forth the glory of god which scripture tells us will bring forth the glory of god we got to stop competing and so you know you might not have the gift to do x but you got the gift to do something else exactly right. right that i can't do right. right and you know i can't sing i can't sing y'all Girl, me either and me either. anthony can sing uh-huh. i mean he can bring the house down yes. and i, I no that's not my gift my my sister has she's like three three octaves above high c she is the most amazing operatic singer and i just look at her and people go you know do you sing like your sister (laughs) and i'm like no "No." (laughs) but then my sister says but i can't do all the stuff that she does and we don't have to compete because Mm -hmm. i'm so proud of her and she's proud of me and that's how we need to be with each other in the body of christ amen be proud for them be excited and be say you know okay man you do that okay i'm gonna go do this because it all works together right Right. and you know so in our own hearts in this season you know y'all it's it's fearful out there Mm -hmm. you know being having a prophetic bent i look i it, it's hard for me not to look at the darkness sometimes right. and go you know okay lord you know what are you doing <laughs> and um but and it's hard not to let fear just come in and scripture tells us that in the last days that our our love will grow cold mm. and why does it grow cold because fear comes in you know all the stuff that's happening you get mad at people and we're we're upset that so and so's doing something and they're doing this and they're you know all of this stuff is going on and i mean all you have to do is look at facebook for about three minutes and you're like oh i'm gonna fight and um (laughs) (laughs) my husband he won't let me watch the news with him anymore because i'm yelling at the i'm yelling at the tv he said you got to go you got to go and he'll turn it off he's like "Mm -hmm." that's a lie you're not, you're not, they'll turn out. Why are you watching this? Right. Um, but y'all, there's no place for fear in a believer's right. heart mm-hmm. because God is big. Yes. Mm-hmm. And if any of us to look at our lives and as believers, and maybe you didn't have a torrid past, I had a torrid mm-hmm. past, mm-hmm. but yeah. some of us didn't grow up like that, and that's good. And you don't have to overcome so many of the things we've had to overcome, but it's realizing that. That's a miracle in itself yes. mm-hmm. that you were able to go through life and not have these things. But let's let's begin to say, Lord, I don't want to be a person that has fear because I don't want to get called out, you know, of the group that's not going to go up against the Midianites. I don't want to get called right. out in that group of 20,000. Um, right, I, I, right, I don't right. want you to say, to no, you, you're going to go home. No, I don't want to go home. Right. Yeah. I want to stay here. You know, I don't want to be so caught up in my work. You know, I don't want to be so much of a Martha yes. right. that I forget to be. Because I'm I'm a doer. Me too. Man, I will get in that mode. And let, Anthony's been laughing at me all week. He said, I, I thought I did a lot. You just <laughs> spin around and naked and you do all this stuff. But we can get into that mode. You know, so, you know, God, forgive me for getting so caught up in, in the things that I don't look up and say, hey, I think that's Jesus. I'm going to get out the boat. <laughs> I'm going to go to Jesus. Uh-huh. Um, don't. Don't let's don't have such a lack of focus mm-hmm. on the Lord because I mean I'm not ADD he's ADHD <laughs> um, but um, it's a good way it's yeah. in a good way um, but I, the lack of focus you know that we're just so squirrel 
and I'm over here, <laughs> you know, and then, and then our selfishness is the biggest key for us, mm-hmm. you know, well, it's just, you know, I'm going to pray for me and mine, yeah. you know, and I'm going to just worry about, you know, my little circle and I'm not going to worry about my neighbors. I'm mm-hmm. not going to worry about the girl standing behind, you know, I posted on Facebook this morning we were eating lunch yesterday in Augusta, and I saw a young woman. Um, I saw a family, and the husband was in a wheelchair. Right. The little boy clearly was autistic. There was just a lot of going on there. And the the wife, she looked tired. She looked weary. and But she was she was on it. She was making sure everybody had their stuff. And I just sat there and just quietly just uttered a prayer. Lord, just give her strength, give her courage. And she was, I was going to say something to her when we were leaving, but she was, she wasn't there when we, when I, um, when we got up and left, but, um, she, but you know, there are people that are struggling Mm -hmm. and there are people that have needs that I can, it just takes some kindness. Mm-hmm. I can just reach out. I don't have to be great in the eyes of the world. I can just Absolutely. say, Lord, I, I, I might be embarrassed because well, they might Well, sometimes it's it. like, look foolish for Jesus. Yes. Right. You want me to do what? Yeah. Okay. Right. I will. You know, <laughs> you know, you want me to say that to them? That type of thing. I mean, you just have to look foolish sometimes. Yeah. yeah I just, I, I in the way the world thinks. Absolutely. You know. I just, thought it was funny to people watching from the beginning thinking she was just a little wallflower <laughs> she's so cool and collected over there yeah with that i've got to run because i need some sleep um you go ahead babe and um enjoy it. it fabulous meeting you thank you um he like myself had a wonderful father named bill turner so, <laughs> wow really yes yeah. oh, that's yeah. funny uh, now what'd your father do my father uh worked uh just uh, a blue collar worker mm-hmm. all of his life. Uh, he's uh, he's still he's still alive, and he's an amazing mm-hmm. man of God. Um, um, I I'm one of those who I can say I was blessed to have a father who believed in me and spoken in my life, and oh, so yeah. that's a blessing. Uh, it's it's mm-hmm. definitely a blessing. My dad did uh, pianos. He tuned pianos in this area for like fifty years. Oh wow, so, uh, wow. wow! So um, with that, I love y'all. Oh, it's great. I'm sleepy. Okay, Bill. <laughs> you be careful going home. Okay. All right. Yeah, All right. Bill, thank you. Get home. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. But anyway, I was excited. You know, Catherine, I was thinking as you were speaking that, you know, I take the word very literally. When Jesus speaks something in the word, I, I believe it's in there for a purpose. Mm-hmm. And so when you were talking about us in competition with each other, and it seems like there's so much going on. When Jesus spoke the prayer that he, Father, he prayed that we would be one as they are one mm-hmm. you know he was praying over his disciples mm-hmm. and all and, but i i even take that in further into the future that his body we need yes. to be one right yes was there one so we can be unified and do what he's called us to do as the body of christ yeah. not as methodist and pentecostal and baptist and you know what i'm yeah, saying absolutely but to be one, to be his body. Amen. Well, you know, it's it. When I was, I went to seminary, and um, you know, I grew up Methodist, and I. It's so funny. I was, the the people that were in my class were either Presbyterian or Baptist. It didn't matter to me, but. After our first semester, we had a debriefing, and one of the and we were supposed to go around and say something, you know, edifying about the other. And this this young woman, she said, um, she goes, I. I, Catherine, I'm just so glad to see that um, that there are some Methodists that are Christians. <laughs> wow! And I laughed, and I said, "Well, there are a lot of us." And um, but well. but what what struck me was that we have this mentality towards other denominations that just kind of, well, you know, that denomination, they, they've got a corner on the truth or this denomination's got a corner. No, we all have a piece of the truth. Mm-hmm. And if we all have a piece, then if we come together, maybe we would have closer to the whole of the truth. Right. And maybe some of the things that aren't truth that we're holding on would get pushed to the wayside. But we've got to come together and, and, I'm going to speak to our women audience right now. Women, we've got to love each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, men need to love each other, but women, we need to love each other. We need to stop seeing each other as, you know, competition competition as, you know, where, you know, sizing each other up. But how do we, 
you know, how do we help one another? How mm-hmm. do we encourage one another? Yes. How do we speak to one another? Because we're all part of the body. Mm-hmm. And if God's going to do something um, in Aiken, South Carolina, or in your town, wherever you're listening from, you know, there's a God's trying to get a women's movement because the women's movement that we see in D.C. with the pink hats mm. and the, you know, the, they have the platform. They're espousing things that are anti-women, that are anti-God exactly. and mm-hmm. anti-children, yes. anti-men, mm-hmm. nothing that is godliness. And we... We have the answer. Mm-hmm. God, Jesus Himself elevated women to in a in a culture that women were property, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it was because of the Christian faith that women began to be elevated and 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 um, were able to come up and have a position in society because of the Jewish and Christian faith. And we 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 have kind of advocated that position in the world. We need to st- rise up and we as a collective voice not to usurp men. We all have our role. Right. Um, men need to, we want to see men rise up and take their position. Amen. We need to take our position. But I think it's important for us to love one another yes and um and Amen. hold one another up and encourage each other and not not be catty <laughs> you know i think part of that the enemy has used you know the women that are coming up the women's movement all the stuff that they're mm-hmm. doing is because the enemy has so degraded the men, the men yes. out of place yes. and knocked them out of their place absolutely as right. the leaders of our home yeah. you know what i mean that the women have had to kind of it's kind of you and know the roles distorted. are reversed yes. yes and the enemy's distorted that role right. yes so there's nothing wrong with being a, a leader and nope. being a woman nope but God has a design has where a, you fall underneath. I mean, if you're married, you know, I'm just using mm-hmm, this. Right. You know, your husband's the leader of your home. Mm-hmm. But so many women have had to step up and be That's the right, leaders yeah. mm-hmm. because the enemy has, has yes. removed, the, the man. removed the man from that. Yeah. You know, so rise up men. Right. right. Rise up men and take rise your up. place, too. And, and so that the women can be, you know, I think about that. Women are, are caretakers of the home. Mm-hmm. Yes. And their children and they, they make sure their home is what it should be. Yes. You know, so well, as a single mother, uh-huh. I've just had to come to terms with Lord. I'm a mother. I'm a woman. I cannot be a man and I cannot be this child's father. Mm-hmm. Right. You said you would be a father to the fatherless. Yes. Now, come on, help me out, sir. <laughs> That's right. And he has in many ways. And right. I'm kind of still on the boat issue mm-hmm. with being in the boat. It was it was Peter's turn to step out of the boat. Well, John and Matthew and the others were still in the boat. And what are they doing? Who, who's next to step out of the boat? Yeah. Who's encouraging Peter? It may not be my turn right. to step out of the boat, but I should be encouraging Peter. Yeah. And I should be telling him, hey, look to Jesus, because, hey, I'm next. God's in the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jesus is here. Mm-hmm. I may be next to step out of the boat. Right. He may mm-hmm. ask me to do something next that is ridiculous, mm-hmm. and I'm going to need my people in the boat mm-hmm. Absolutely. to encourage me. Yes. That's awesome. awesome. Yes. That's good. Man, what a great And word. speaking of truth, when God reveals, I say this all the time, you know, you stole my song. You can't sing my song. The <laughs> Lord gave it to you. Therefore, he gave it to the body and I can sing it. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. When God reveals, I can't sing, by the way, but uh, I have a voice. When God reveals truth to a man or woman of God and He and it's your turn to share it, then you need to give it because it's for the whole body. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. In order to unite us. Mm-hmm. He, didn't, he didn't give it to you for you to bury it. Or to hold on to it for a certain group, right? right. Right. And you know, you we talk about religion and stuff, but to me, all the denominations—they're just man-made anyway. They are Mm -hmm. man-made. They're all man-made religions, Mm -hmm. you know. Well, I tell you, one of the things that, um, like what Catherine said, uh, many times the thing that we have to make sure of—I, I, I, one of my words and buzzwords is honor and the Mm -hmm. lead with honor. And um, everything that we've been talking about uh, tends to either showing honor or dishonor. Mm -hmm. Because, and really what honor is, is seeing the value of. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's that's basically the the definition of honor, is the ability to see the value in Mm -hmm. a thing or a person. And so whether that's... uh, that's a person, and so one of the things that the enemy tries to do, that's where division comes in. Division comes in when you want to not see the honor uh, that God has put in, whether it's he's put it in 
in in, in a man mm -hmm. and you don't see the the honor of that or he's put it in a woman the, the, all of the things that we're mm -hmm. talking about where, where where women were 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 suppressed is because we didn't see that we didn't see the, we didn't see the value mm -hmm. and so whenever you see value you honor um uh we 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 have competition because we think that my piece is better than your piece or whatever the case may be understanding and knowing you know it's funny i uh, i was talking to a group of people not too long ago and i and i said what does um what does vinegar the color red and salt have in common and everybody was kind of just looking and scratching <laughs> their head and i said Three of all three of those are ingredients to a slamming red velvet cake. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, but here's the thing: you do not use as much vinegar as you use flour. Right. You do not use as much red food coloring as you do sugar. However, they all are necessary to have a really, really good cake. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so many times we we want to measure. Our, you know, if I'm a, if I've got a platform, I, let me tell you, uh, I've I've been able to travel the world uh, in in what I do, and none of this could have happened without my grandmother, who had a third grade education, but was my first intercessor, my first spiritual mother, my first mentor. She she poured into me, and I mean. It's it's so funny. Uh, she she was brought up uh, Baptist girl, mm -hmm. um, and like I said, uh, third grade education. But she had a prophetic voice. She didn't she didn't know she was prophetic, right. and neither did we. We just thought she was just you know just talking. Mm -hmm. I thought she was just talking from a place of bias, being my grandmother. Mm -hmm. But she would look at me all the time and just point her finger at me and say, "God has His hand on you. You are oh, marked yeah. by God." But I mean, she just constantly did that. And and actually, when I received the call of God on my life, it was June. 15th 1980 it was two o'clock in the morning and when 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 the sun came up i was in the navy i didn't i love my dad i love my mom I, I you know i didn't call my mom i didn't call my dad i didn't call my wife i called my grandmother uh -huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> because she was the one now i say that because uh i've 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 traveled to multiple countries. I've preached the gospel all over the place. I've gotten to lead worship on, I, I, in 2015, I actually got to lead worship in um, our capital, the United States Capitol wow. in the rotunda. Mm -hmm. But I realized that that was because this little grandma mm -hmm. with a third grade education did what she was called to do Amen. to pull out what father has called me to do. And so I, I, every chance I get, I, I, uh, she went home to be with the Lord in 2006 at 101 years old. Wow. And, um, and uh, every chance I get, I am a byproduct of her prayers, of her speaking into my life. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows. I mean, you know, very few people that I've, uh, spoken into know my grandmother mm -hmm. but what they hear is her prayers and her yeah. prophetic words over my life yeah. so what may seem to be a little tiny piece mm -hmm. was a tremendously uh, important piece to see the gospel go in different places so mm -hmm. I, I through that I've really learned and he's still teaching me we we all you know we never arrived there but he's teaching me how to honor what I see in every uh, man woman boy and girl that the father's put on the planet and right. so that that has is helping me to 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 realize that we do need to be one right. and just like you were you were saying that prayer that Jesus prayed in, in John chapter 17, make them one as, as we are one. The way you, the way that that starts is when you can look at each other and realize, Oh my goodness, what, you, what you carry, even though, um, what you do, I can't do, but I honor you for what you do. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And then that's when we'll begin to see, 
uh, the oneness come and there's a power in one that can only be manifested when we come together right mm -hmm. and I, I was thinking about that when you said that with you up there singing friday night and worshiping i am thankful that god has given you that voice and that mm -hmm. ability because i would hate to think they had to listen to me up there singing <laughs> and trying to lead. right you know what i'm saying did, like, girl. i'm like I'm yes you. thank you you know just worshiping and stuff because and i love that the different giftings that that god gives we should celebrate that mm -hmm. with yes within the body you know yes That's right. yes you know, you can minister in song, you preach, you do all that kind of stuff. You do what you do at Life Choices, and so many people's lives are touched. You do that at our church, Rachel, in our deliverance ministry mm -hmm. and all the different things. You know, I mean, I mean, I'm Donna, Donna, I know. you know what I meant. <laughs> um, and because I have often said to myself, I don't want, I'm the church treasurer, and I've often said to myself, God, I don't want to just be an administrator. Mm hmm I mean, I know what I do is important. Yes. I have to do my job mm -hmm. for the church. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I, sometimes I feel like I don't want to just be that. I want to do something else mm -hmm. for your kingdom. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I want to yes. be able to speak into people's lives. And then, boom, here's the radio mm -hmm. station. And we get to do that. And he yes. uses this in that way. So, I mean, I just love that. And, and I think that great point, and just to kind of go back over that, is we have to, as the body of Christ, redefine greatness yes mm -hmm. you know we have to redefine mm -hmm. greatness my little grandmother I, I i wouldn't be alive if my grandmother had not prayed me through mm -hmm. my craziness um but she she was tied to an oxygen oxygen machine and for the last probably 10 years of her life barely came out of her little uh, house uh -huh. and but she prayed uh -huh. every day for her grandchildren, her children. And she would tell the same thing. Trina, she called me Trina. Um, she, Trina, you know, I, let me hold your hands. I, I just know God's going to use your hands to heal. And she would speak things over me. And, you know, most the world would look at that and go, that was nothing. You know, she didn't she didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. She did. Mm -hmm. She did because Absolutely. she's she's created a legacy that where she's now up in heaven. She's one of my um, cloud of witnesses uh -huh. cheering me on, right. you know, to do the things that maybe she could never have done. Mm -hmm. But um, but she's doing it through me yeah. because yes. I'm hers. Mm -hmm. Right. And but so nothing is too small. Right. And so being an administrator, being, you know, a kindergarten teacher, we don't have to be somebody. I was telling Anthony, somebody told my son, said, oh, um, and my son, if y'all know him, he he's the quietest. He's six, four, and he's just this quiet little man, young man. And um, but they said, oh, are you going to be like your mama? You know, I just see that you could just be this wonderful pastor. And I, I was just like about to get upset because I said, you know, why does he have to be a pastor to serve the Lord? Right. Like, you know, why can't he be an accountant or be a, you know, whatever, you know, that fits his personality? Because Seth's not going to be in the natural. Seth's not going to be one that's just going to stand up mm -hmm. on, at a pulpit, you know. But why can't he be, why can't he serve the Lord and help people save money that they can sow really into are. the kingdom? Why can't he be, you know, someone that, you know, who knows, but that fits who God made him? Because each of us, you know, have that thing that he's placed in our DNA that he says, okay, you're this and you're this and you're doing this and it all works together. But if we redefine greatness... And see that it's we're not Christian adjacent, hmm. you know, where we put on our Christian when we go to church, but we we are nice everybody everywhere else. No, we are God's person. Yes, in the earth, in in the earth, in that position. Yeah. And if we say, Lord, today I'm going to be sitting behind my desk and I'm going to do administrative stuff. And Lord, I don't know how that glorifies you, but I'm in my heart going to mm -hmm. glorify you. And I'm going to ask him that, Lord, just let, if, let somebody come in or if somebody calls on the phone or whatever, but I'm going to be the best administrator mm -hmm. that I can be, or I'm going to be the best dentist, or I'm going to be, you know, not for my sake, but for your yes. sake, so that I can 
show the world what it is to be in the kingdom yes. and what it means to be a kingdom dweller. <laughs> mm-hmm. right. We got to change the definition of great. Yes, Speaking of, of kingdom dwellers, you know, the body of Christ, we're not always going to be here. We are kingdom people. God mm-hmm. is preparing this body to rule and govern with him in a kingdom. Mm-hmm. And he's testing us now. Mm-hmm. And the, thing, the same things that he's given us here on this side, we're going to use them mm-hmm. in kingdom work. Mm-hmm. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, the other day at the march, I turned around and I was shaking hands. Well, <laughs> glad to finally meet you, you know, my brother, <laughs> my sister. Because when we get to heaven, yeah. yes, that's what it's going to be. Yeah. Finally get to meet you. Yeah. I've heard yeah. about you my whole Exciting. life. Yeah. You know, because when I was born into the kingdom of God, I was reborn into a whole new family. Yes. Mm-hmm. You are my sister. You're my mm-hmm. brother. You're my sister. Right. I should look at you just as if my biological brother walked in the door yes. and encourage him and love him and, and you know, talk to him and pre- minister to him about the, the kingdom of God. Amen. That's what we're going to be doing in, in the kingdom world. Amen. You know, it's funny you say that. I, um, I have two, I have three siblings, two sisters and a brother, but uh, growing up, we did not grow up in church. I mean, my family just didn't go to church. I have none of that background to say I could have, you know, I had a grandmother praying for me Mm -hmm. or there's that, but I was that, that child that rode the church bus. Mm -hmm. And I can think back, get even right now getting, I'll be 55 this year, but I can think back getting on that, that little bus riding to church and the impact that my youth leader. At that church, his name was Bruce. Yep. I don't mm-hmm. remember his last name. I don't remember anything. And I may have told the story before. The impact he made in my life yeah. at that time. Yes. And I remember growing up, my mom used to always say, it's so funny. She used to say, oh, you're my, you're my special one. I don't know what I'd do without you. Because I am so different mm-hmm. than anybody else in my family. Yep. Meaning, I mean, my siblings... I mean, I'm completely different from any of them. And I, and I say that now because mom used to say, you're the only one that helps me in the house. You help me wash clothes. You help me do this. Even at that age, I look back and mm-hmm. look to where I'm now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I still do the same kind of things. Work. The, the work, but just kind of in the background work. Yeah. Does that yep. make sense? Uh-huh. You know what I'm Absolutely. saying? Mm-hmm. And I, that's where I find my strength mm-hmm. is being, you know, at church. Sometimes I'll have to get up and make an announcement. I'm like, because that's not my, you know, that's yeah. not my thing. I don't have to get up and let everybody see that right. that I'm doing this or whatever. I'm just going to do my thing. And, you you know, <laughs> that's not what God gifted me for. That's you, mm-hmm. you know. And so I think about that and the differences in the kingdom. Yes. And how all of us working together, you know, make each other strong and lift each other up. Cause, you know, Because if we don't have that, you know, if we don't have that person, you know, that person for me is gay. Right. You know, she... She makes me shine because she's she's done all this stuff in the background before we even launch anything, right, right. you know, and she's that person. Anthony's got Lourdes that she's that person. Yes. Do you and remember when Pastor said, you know, what you fail to recognize will leave you. Uh huh. So he's always very um, vigilant about recognizing gifts in the church yeah, because that's good. He yes. wants them to stay. That's yeah. honest. Yes. That's honest. He honors right. And everything you said today is right on Pastor's sermon yesterday. <laughs> yeah, and when you start talking up. about John and the yeah. boat being immediately to those, so that's what he preached yes. on yesterday. It was well, phenomenal. Yes. Yeah, it Praise was great. Do you remember how far Jesus walked? Three furlongs. That's right. Thirty furlongs. Three Thirty miles. furlongs. Three miles. Yeah, that's it. Wow. It, I, that translation. Yeah. yeah but <laughs> yeah. it was good. But yeah, I thought about the same you thing when you started it. talking about that. Yeah, wow. it was great. Gosh, y'all, we've got four minutes left, so we're going to have to wrap it up. But it has been such a blessing to have you here. Mm-hmm. The blessing and honor has been mine. And, it really uh, has. So exciting. Thank and you Catherine, for as always, um, we're you. just so excited about what Life Choices is doing. And we mm-hmm. tell people all the time about y'all and we try to tell them to come and bring and donate and give and if you've got things you know and people do we yes. ask people how how'd you find out about us yay dana and you guys will be seeing more of me with with my job good we'll yeah. talk about that later yeah then. donna's excited about that to get hooked up but we're just so thankful for what life choices does well, and i'm telling you with bill it is such a um he loves what he does there he truly does love it well we and appreciate so, him and if there are other men that want to just come and sew into men Yes. Please, please, please come. And see, he's often said, and I can say this about him because he's not here and he may still be listening, <laughs> but he's often said, you know, 
I didn't grow up. I don't know. You know, he's still learning the Bible, learning all mm-hmm. the story. You know, he said, but God is using him in a whole different way. Well, they don't know either. <laughs> right. But he, they're using him because right. of his life experiences yeah. and what he can speak into their lives because he's been there, done that. Yeah. And how God's transformed him. You know what I mean? Yes. He can encourage. So God uses us all. Yeah. It goes right. back to that again. I, I feel like we, we are all a solution going somewhere to happen. Right. Yes. I That's, love that. A solution going somewhere to happen. Mm-hmm. I love that. If Rachel oh, yeah. was here, she'd be done tight that out. <laughs> She's so good about doing stuff yes. like that. Well, guys, it is about three minutes till. So I just want to thank y'all for coming. Thank you for having Taking us. your Monday morning thank and you. speaking to our, we've had uh, quite a few people on here this morning. Everybody has just been enjoying it. They're saying, thank you so much. Good stuff. Anthony and Catherine and the crew. Uh, they've enjoyed it. Been just just talking about it all the way through it so this will be archived on youtube that you can go back and see it of course and i did get anthony recorded so you may be hearing that again on the radio um, soon and that'll be exciting too so i just want to thank y'all all for joining us this morning for those of you on facebook thank you too i'm going to get our exit in here so we can get on out of here it's joy unspeakable Thank you all for joining us. Thanks to our sponsors for making this show possible. Thanks to our faithful friends that join us each and every week. Uh, Monday mornings from 8 to 10. God bless. Thank you all for coming. All of our guest hosts this morning. I thank you all all. You want to say anything? Thank you. I enjoyed it. It was a blast. And uh, anyway, guys, we'll be back next week. Paul and April will be joining us. Don't forget we got our 100th episode coming up on August the 8th. I mean, October the 8th. And we're excited about it. So until then, guys, we love you all. God bless. God bless. What kind of joy is there? This is Jace Turner, and you are listening to the Voice of Truth Station, WUCC 99.9 FM, Williston, Aiken, Augusta.